Hey everybody, Donnie coming back at you here. Welcome to the shop. I get asked all the time um, about sanding the stuff that I do for wood turning. So I wanted to bring you guys in and give you uh, my take on how I sand and, and what I do to get a decent finish on whatever it is that I'm making on the lathe. Um, because I think there's some misconceptions about turning and how you do it and I kind of just want to show you guys what I do. So first things first, no matter how good of a turner you are, no matter how much you practice, there's still going to be some sanding that needs to be done to the outside, the inside, whatever you're messing with, there's still going to have to be some sanding done, right? So there are several ways to do this. This is just the way that I tackle it and it's been working out well for me uh, or pretty well so far. So the first thing we're going to talk about is regular sanding um, with sandpaper and, and things like that. So um, I use cling spore as much as I can. I still have some leftover Diablo stuff, but everything that I have in here, I'm kind of transferring over to cling spore stuff. And this is not sponsored by them, but, but there'll be a link in the uh, video description or over on the blog post where you guys can go visit Mike and them over at cling spore. Really good people. They really know what they're talking about with sandpaper. Um, I use it on my drum sander, I use it on my uh, oscillating sander, and of course now I'm using it on all my random uh, orbital sanders and stuff like that. So I use some of this uh, Ultraflex paper if I'm doing regular hand sanding of bowls, spindles, things like that. I will once again use uh, even some of the round discs that for, for my um, RO sander. I'll use them on bowls and things like that too. Here's where I think I will probably differ from a lot of people. So of course I try and I try and every time I turn I try and make it as smooth as I possibly can and um, I try and get a finish so where I don't have to sand as any more than I have to. So I always make one final sharpen on my tool before I make a final cut on whatever it is that I'm going to do. That helps me tremendously get a very nice finish. Now, next thing I do is I usually start at around 120 or 150 sanding on whatever piece I'm starting on. Um, that's where I try and start. Sometimes I'll be able to do 180 or 220, but I'll either start at 150, 180, then I'll go to 220, then once I go to 220, I go to 320. And that's kind of all I sand. Once I'm finished sanding uh, with the regular paper, then I will go to something like some Yorkshire grit and I will do a finished sanding on it. So Yorkshire grit, if you're not familiar with it, it is a, an abrasive paste that basically breaks down as you use it into a finer and finer paste, which makes it more of a higher and higher grit sanding uh, paste is basically what it is. So first thing I do is I try and practice enough that my cuts that come off of my tool are really good. I go from 150 or 180 to 220 to 320 to the Yorkshire grit and then I clean things up from there. Also what I believe is one of the things that a lot of people are not doing is if I turn a bowl at a thousand RPMs I'm sanding at at least 500 RPMs or less. I am sanding at at least half or less than what I am turning at no matter what I'm doing. So I will turn the machine down and, and what that does is, is it allows the sandpaper, the grit in the paper, it allows it to actually bite on the wood and remove the material versus if it's spinning too fast. So if you basically sand at the same speed that you turn at it's just going to glide right over the top of it and kind of almost burnish the sandpaper and it's not really going to do any good. And a lot of times what happens is, is people do that, they sand for a few seconds and they go, oh wow, the sandpaper's no good, so they throw it away and they're just wasting sandpaper. It's because you need to slow the machine down and allow the sandpaper to bite and get the best results. I learned that the hard way. Um, Another thing that I think is a big convenience, but not a must have, is having reverse on your lathe, right? If you have reverse on your lathe, 
it's kind of like when you cut your grass outside. If you notice when you go one way, the grass lays down one way. But when you turn around and come the other way, the grass goes the other way. So it kind of creates this one side looks dark, one side looks light thing. I think that's kind of what's happening also when you're turning because the fibers of the piece of wood will stand up and lay down depending on what direction you're going in. So if you can kind of reverse that direction and hit it a little bit, I think it kind of has a little bit better effect for me anyway. It really, really makes a big difference. So if you do have reverse on your lathe, use reverse on your lathe. Just remember that if you have something chucked up or if you're using um, a Longworth chuck like from me or somebody else, remember how the threads are. So don't be super aggressive because that chuck or that piece can basically unscrew itself from the headstock itself. That's why some chucks you'll see, they say reversible chucks. It's because there's a set screw in it that allows it to lock onto the threads. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, this isn't rocket science stuff or anything. I know it's just sanding, but I, I kind of really want you guys and gals to understand that, you know, slow down with the speed, slow down what you're doing. Now, the next thing is power sanding, right? So I do some power sanding myself. Um, it makes for quick work, depending on, mainly on bowls, inside, outside of bowls. I can power sand real quick and, and just get on about my business. I don't have to sit there and mess around. So when it comes to power sanding, once again, Kling Spore really has an awesome setup. It is a twist lock style setup and um, I have once again all the way from like 120 up to 400 on my uh, on my grits and I have a two inch uh, interlock and I have a three inch interlock. I'm using just a regular old Chicago pneumatic Harbor Freight special drill. It's got a little angle drill. I know that Milwaukee and a few others sell like a 45 degree angle drill. They're kind of expensive, they're kind of high on the end. I think I got this one for like 29 bucks with a 20% off coupon. So it was very economical, very inexpensive for me to get. Um, but with the twist lock, you can essentially just write on the twist lock itself what you have. So and then the piece stays in the drill and all you're doing is just twisting and unlocking every time you have to change grits. So it really makes life really nice um, hey everybody, sorry to interrupt. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. I was just about ready to put this thing out on the YouTubes and I reached out to my buddy Mike over at Kling Spore and he has agreed to give uh, $10 off on this kit for anyone who has the promo code and um, the link will be in the description. You have to use the promo code for a limited time, MMP2019. Get over there, get yourself one of these kits. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. You'll definitely be glad you have it. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. Now on with the video. I still finish everything up with the Yorkshire Grit. Uh, Yorkshire Grit, how do you like that? I finish everything up with the Yorkshire Grit. Uh, just using a little bit of paper towel, never wrapped around my fingers or anything. I put on a nice liberal coat. I spin it, I spin it up faster now. When I'm doing the Yorkshire grit, I do spin the speed back up. Um, once I get it to a certain point, because I'm kind of almost then trying to um, use it as a high speed type of deal. And uh, it works really, really well. And, uh, and it really makes everything that I turn smooth as can be, smooth as it needs to be for what I'm doing for the purpose. I'll take a, a clean paper towel once I'm completely finished. I'll blow everything off, take a clean paper towel, spin it up, wipe everything off, and then there it is. So it's very cheap to get regular sandpaper down at the big box stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, your local hardware store. Get just regular sheet good paper, but it's not going to work well if you don't spin the piece correctly. If you're spinning it too fast, you're wasting your time and you're wasting sandpaper. So next time you get out in the shop, try and slow down your piece a little bit. It doesn't matter what it is, a spindle, a bowl, a little bitty box that you're turning, whatever it is, get out there, slow it down a little bit, and uh, let me know if you find some new results that you think are really, really awesome. I think you're gonna be surprised 
at how much better and how much easy how much easier it is to sand stuff and uh, it'll, it'll make things uh, really really nice for you a quick thing on safety yes I'm gonna talk about some safety if you're sanding in your shop above me and above the camera up here is, a, uh, is an air filtration system that I run but I also run this uh, ellipse dust mask it works well it's very inexpensive it even fits around my beard and keeps all the dust out I also have a little chute that'll come over here that hooks to my dust collector to kind of suck that stuff away from me so um, just make sure you use a little uh, precaution instead of breathing all that crap in trust me you don't want that stuff in your lungs it'll uh, it just make for a bad day give you a headache and everything like that if you ever notice and you go inside after sanding all day and you're not wearing uh, respiration respiratory devices you know PPE and you go inside and you realize that evening or the next day man I got a headache it's probably because you're full of dust and stuff like that so there'll be links in the uh, description or the blog post for all these things if you guys are interested you can go check that out and uh, go check it out over at DonnieCarter.com or uh, once again in the description there'll be links to all the stuff that I use and uh, hopefully this helps some of you guys out with uh, just making sanding a little bit easier and a little bit more enjoyable, if you, if you will, you know, if you can, as you're as you're doing stuff on the lathe, and uh, leave some comments. Let me know if you try it out and uh, how it works out for you. Hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.